I'm Bobby.、Uh, I'm a creative artist. I work in animation in London, and I'm also a filmmaker and photographer. I really enjoy expressing myself and just showing the world to people through my lens.、Um, today, I'll be going through. Um, how I shot a short film that I did with my friend, which I uploaded to YouTube, and a lot of people are very curious about my approach,、um, the way I set up my camera, and also the way I color grade. So I'm going to go through how I set up my camera, which is the Fujifilm XH2S. I've had it for half a year now, or less than that.、Um, I really enjoyed it. I also have the Fujifilm XT3. Which I've had for two years. I've shot a lot with it, and I filmed a lot with it, and I was really keen to get this camera because it has all the things that I wish my other camera had. So it's been really, really great shooting with it and seeing what I can achieve.、Um, I'm also going to go through、um, how I color graded the short film and through a new plugin that I started using, which is called Dehancer. It's a plugin for DaVinci Resolve. Um, you can use it in Final Cut and other NLEs. I'm going to go through the way I research color,、um, what I like in color, what films inspire me,、um, and also, yeah, the approach. I'm still learning, so、um, it's, it's still, you know, you never stop learning.、Uh, I'm going to go through the settings and the Vinci Resolve, how I set up my projects,、uh, how I color grade, how to use the Hanser, and also、um, I'm giving away. Ten、uh, percent discount, which I've worked through with the Hanser, so you can get a ten percent off、uh, the plugin, which is really great. Thanks to the Hanser for doing that.、Um, so yeah, let's go into、uh, the video. Okay, so I'm going to run through the settings、uh, on how I set up、uh, video recording on my Fujifilm XH2S camera.、Um, so to access video recording, you can go to the little. Uh, camera icon over here, or you can also set up、uh, all these custom buttons to whatever you want them to do. They could be either photo or video mode, and they can be like just various different settings that you've set up. So C1 for me is my sort of the full bang like、um, 6K recording. So I'm just gonna go through back shot settings so you can see. Um, so the easiest is to set it up through the movie settings list over here.、Um, as you can see, I have it at 6.2K, 3.3 by 2 means that's the aspect ratio. It means it uses the full width and height of the sensor,、um, and also it uses the full resolution at 6.2K. So that is the best of the best that you can get on this camera in terms of resolution and.、Um, And an aspect ratio. I shoot in three by two because I like posting both on Instagram and on YouTube, and that way I can crop、um, a lot easier than if I shot 16 by nine, which is how a lot of more a lot of digital、uh, consumer cameras shoot.、Um, I shoot 25p, so that means 25 frames per second, because I am in the UK, and that means that the lights will not flicker if it's at a different frame rate.、Um, I shoot at H.265. O intra encoding at 422 color sampling, and I use the highest bit depth, which is 722, 220 megabits per second.、Um, you can use,、um, you can shoot ProRes on this camera, although you need a CF Express Side B card, which are slightly expensive. I haven't invested in that yet, but if you have some of the top of the line SD cards, which are not too expensive, you can record basically. Really, really good stuff for, from this camera.、Um, I've never had an issue with frames dropping or anything like that. So yeah, go for that. And I always shoot in F log.、Um, obviously, this is a Fuji camera. You can use all the film simulations, but I do like color grading my own footage and trying new ideas out. So shooting F log means that it's it going to give you the most flexibility in post to color grade the footage and make it really your own. Another setting that is really useful when shooting F-log is the F-log View Assist. So that is in the screen setup in the settings. It's called F-log View Assist, which means it's going to put a、um, tone corrected image on top of the F-log, so you can visualize it a lot better. Otherwise, you'll be a very grey image.、Um, so definitely enable that,、um, and that's just for the preview. And lastly, I do set up my、um, autofocus settings. So I have mine. 
So yeah, you can see here we have tracking sensitivity. I have mine on a bit higher, so that means that it's sort of more locked on to the uh, subject that you focused on. Um, and the AF speed up, up lower down, so it means the AF speed is slower. That's only the type of shooting I do, so it's a bit more cinematic. If you shoot sports or wildlife, you obviously want it to be faster, so I would move that um, to be a fast focus speed. If that's what you do but for me i have a, a little bit lower so that means like the focus is nice and gradual and slow um and not like really quick and maybe jittery um i think that's it for the camera so let's go back in the vincha resolve and have a look at how i grade the footage Okay, so now we are in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, so let's start looking into how I color graded this using uh, both the enhancer and doing my own adjustments uh, to make everything coherent. So I'm going to try and go through every um, section of the enhancer and try and explain it the best as I can uh, to you so you understand how to use it um, and what's the purpose of each section. So, um, first of all, uh, I shot this film, as I said, in F-Log2 on my Fujifilm X-H2S camera. Um, if I turn off every color correction, this is how um, F-Log looks. So it's very flat, um, it's very grey, it's not very saturated, and that's how it's supposed to look, as this allows us to manipulate the image as much as we want um it's a really great way to do that um and a lot of film cameras do this like big cinema cameras as well so and fuji film are uh, toting a really great um latitude of the image using the new f-log profile so if we zoom in to this we can see there's a lot of detail everywhere this is a 6k file uh so i'm working only on a 1080p um uh, timeline but yeah it's a 6k file and there's like a great amount of detail into this image but even at 1080p you can just see how much detail there is uh, before I go through the hands room I'm just going to show you how I set up my color management because that is really important so in DaVinci Resolve in the latest versions they're really simplified things um, I'm working for uh, SDR which is like standard dynamic range this is for YouTube for websites for for the internet um this is the, the the color processing that i'm using but it's still using the full color pipeline that davinci resolve has and there's a lot of latitude in using that so yeah i have it at rec 709 and rec 709 a because i have a mac um i think yeah that's so good here all right so Dehancer. Cool. So the way you start is by choosing your source. So um, there's many different ways to start setting this up. For me, I know what camera I shot this on and what sort of F-Log I used. You can start with Rec. 709. If you have, let's say, you don't know where, where the footage came from. Um, and if you, if you don't know if it's log or not, you could probably start with that. But if you know your camera, you know exactly what you shot on. Uh, you can definitely go through it for the list of cameras. They support many different cameras from even your iPhone. Um, but also like cinema cameras like Ari, Alexis, Canon, RED cameras, Sony. Um, they, they do really have a great uh, array of supported cameras. For me, it's Fuji Havel, so I picked my Fuji film. XH2S, they have it right here. And the format, there's F-Log and F-Log 2. Um, I used F-Log 2, which is the newest, best F-Log that Fuji have. So I went for that. Um, if I go through Rec. 709, you see because it was F-Log, it still looks really, really gray. Um, so that's not what I want. So let's go back to that. So there's a few sort of global adjustments you can do. A lot of these I would do uh, on a per clip basis, but here, because I did overexpose the footage on purpose, so I have like the most latitude and so that my shadows are not too noisy because F-Log, uh, when you shoot F-Log, you have to use a higher ISO than F-Log 1. 
uh, which the ISO is um, 12,500, uh, sorry, 1,250. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, so it, it, does, it, it does make the footage a bit more noisier, so that's why I overexpose and then I bring it down in comp. Um, so you can see here, it's really, really bright. So, and that's kind of for the majority of the footage. So that's, what, that's why I brought it down here rather than going one by one and doing the same thing on every clip. Um, so yeah, you have like temperature, compensation, tint, which is like magenta or green. If it leans one or the other way, you can sort of correct that. Um, I'm actually not sure what these do. So don't ask me about it. Um, the way I set up my my no trees uh, in Resolve, um, when you start putting your footage, you would see that you will not have these group ones. You only, only have clip and timeline. So um, to have a group, you can group things together uh, by selecting a bunch of shots, right clicking and adding them into a group, into a new group and you'll be asked to like give it a name. So I've given mine a name so you can uh, you can see all your groups are going to be here and you can then assign uh, a group to a footage that you maybe missed or added later. Um, and why I do that is because um, I have some elements which are not from my Fuji camera. So I have like text and I don't want that to be affected by the film emulation because yeah, I don't want it because it, it kind of messes up uh, the contrast and the color of the text and because it, it's a different type of footage, you know, it's not uh, shot on the camera, it's uh, Rec. 709 footage. So you, you would want to kind of add different um, sources to different groups so you can control them. Um, and that means that I have the enhancer on a separate on a separate place. You don't want to put the enhancer on each clip because then you won't be able to have a global adjustment on everything. But also when it comes to adding plugins that really um, like change your footage, either if it's a lot or a plugin like the Hanser, you want it to be at the very end of the pipeline because at that point it really compresses your footage um, and you lose all the latitudes that you have. So any adjustments you, you make to a clip, you want it to do it on the clip before essentially. So this is, it enhancer means when it's on a post clip, it means that it's applied on top of everything after the adjustments you've made on the clip. So that's really important to do it that way. Um, to compare how, what like the final result look like, looks like in the enhancer and what it would look like if you just put the, the LUT provided by Fujifilm, which is just like the really standard way of correcting F-Log, very sort of scientific. Um, would be like this. So I'll disable the enhancer and I'm gonna enable this. You can press Control or Command D or like right click on the little number here. And I'm going to disable all my adjustments here. So there's not too many of them. Um, so you can see, yeah, it looks a bit more boring. Um, let's see here as well. It just doesn't have that you know, feel to that the enhancer gave it through the film emulation. So I'm just gonna re-enable these. Here I was kind of playing with a lot of things and then I decided not to go with them. So that's why I have like some nodes here that I didn't really, really go for at the end. So I'm just gonna disable that. So let's go through each section here. So your most important thing is film profile. So this, the enhancer has many different film profiles that you can choose from. They range from film negatives, like actual uh, films used for, for movies, and also um, picture films, like you would use on a, on a little film camera. Um, so yeah, there's many different ones, maybe some of them you've seen before, you've heard of, like Kodak, um, they're you know, one of the most famous film uh, companies uh, that make film, um, and one of the, the most famous ones and the ones that are used in cinema are these Vision 3 ones. Um, so yeah, I was kind of playing around with different kind of film profiles, just kind of getting to see what they look like, um, so you can kind of change them here, and you get a different look, there's black and white ones which look really really amazing actually, um, but yeah, I kind of ended up on Cine still, 800s, 
and the T at the end, it means that it's balanced for tungsten. So tungsten is a type of light source that a lot of you know and have seen. Uh, it's like the really warm glow that lighting has at night. It's Tungsten is like the material that's in a light bulb that sort of heats up uh, and produces light. And that's really warm. And um, a lot of these will have a, either a D or a T at the end of the film stock. A D means it's daylight balanced. So when you think about um, the sun, uh, it produces a certain type of light and we measure that in Kelvin. Um, so daylight is around 55,000 Kelvin. Um, and that a lot of your, ca every camera has to balance uh, its white balance to to something uh, so it looks correct otherwise you have a white wall that will look really red or a white wall that will look really blue um, so to achieve a white balance you would balance so like the whites look white you know and that depends on the light source um, I went with T because uh, I kind of shot throughout the day and it was sort of it's in the winter so the sun was kind of really low all the time really warm it wasn't really high in the sky that means like as it as it dips down the sun gets warmer because it passes through um uh the atmosphere uh and it kind of like the light the, the the light kind of gets um a, a lot more warmer so that's why i chose a here in the tea and i also went into the night as, it, as we were shooting so i preferred that um, you can have a push and pull effect that can be done in film that means that um that emulates if your film was under or overexposed. Uh, you can play with that and see if you like it. I didn't go for that. So film compression, it sort of like compresses the highlights and the um, shadows quite a bit. Uh, I didn't go with that, but that's another thing you can do. It can kind of like clip your highlights if they're really bright. It can kind of roll them off a bit better because um, with digital cameras, um, highlights clip and they can have a really strong edge where they clip where it goes above what your camera can capture so that's what that is for uh expand is something i use to like sort of again it's sort of similar to the other one so you can see it kind of erases if if we look here at my scopes it kind of raises your black points and your white points so it lowers it um so yeah there's another thing you can play with um so Another thing to go through is scopes here, the sort of your eyes when when you get when you look at some footage it can get a little bit you can get kind of really used to it and, and forget um, what colors look like. So it's really great to kind of look at your waveform. There's kind of different kinds of there's a vector scope, um, there's another really important thing, so you kind of see where your colors live. So we can see this is uh, yellow and red and magenta and blue and green uh, and cyan so you can see sort of how your footage lives and this line is the skin tone line so usually you should aim to have your skin tones fall around this line so they look natural um, so let's back the, to the waveform print is what your prints um, was so what your film stock was printed on so this is like a new feature I think in the answer um, so you can kind of go through different ones. You can see here in linear, the footage kind of becomes a bit less contrasty um, and it kind of loses to me a bit of its magic. So I went, there's like two diff a few different ones. So Kodak Film Prints is one of the most famous ones. So this is what a color negative would be printed on and displayed uh, using a optical um, pr uh, printer. Um, so here there's target white, you can use that to kind of kind of really push uh, the white balance of your footage you, with the color print. So it, I guess maybe it depends on the lamp that we use. I'm not sure, to be honest. But yeah. So exposure, uh, you can again play with your exposure here. Uh, another great tool. And I love how this sort of, it really behaves how you expect it. Like on a, when you're editing a raw image. Tonal contrast. So this increases the contrast. I do use this quite a bit. Not for this footage because I adjusted my contrast on a per shot basis and not in general. Color density. So that means it's not saturation. Like the way um, color becomes more saturated in film. It's, it, it is called density. It it doesn't become more bright. It's a, I'm not sure how to explain it correctly. But um, you can kind of see that the, 
the colors have like more depth to them um if you want to say that but yeah you can see here it's kind of becoming a bit less desaturated but it feels very natural it feels it doesn't feel like you've whacked up the saturation every color is like this bright neon red or something it's a very tasteful way and then you obviously have saturation uh which i had on i think the standard yeah is 100 so when you you can see how it's different when you drop the saturation it really sucks out all the color but when you drop down the color density, it's sort of desaturated, but in a it's in, it's in a different way, and it's more uh, realistic to to film stock. So here, um, these are like sort of you can kind of play with your colors here. So you know you can kind of push the reds and the greens a little bit, and it, it's it's really cool. I think it, it, this this is really a great way of color grading, and it's really fast, and it kind of impacts everything. So that's really great. Film grain. So film grain is inherent to film stocks because um, that's how it's made. It's like film is made of like many little particles and depends on the size of the film. And that, uh, you, the, the size of the film depends on how big your film grain is. Um, so you can sort of really play with this. Um, but yeah, like go tasteful. If you want, you can go like really crazy with it. If you're trying to emulate eight millimeter film, that will have like a lot of a lot of a lot of grain on the footage, uh, so you can kind of see it here. But it looks very natural, and I really like how the grain works. So halation and blue are two things that I would like to go through by showing you some examples first before um, going through them. I want to show you a website that is quite useful. Um, I'm not endorsed by them or anything, but yeah, it's really great. It's called Shot Deck. So this is basically like a search engine for films. Um, it's really great that you can basically search for anything. They have hundreds, thousands of films, hundreds of shots that um, they've used. And you can like search for, you can, as you can see, film, actor, lighting, set location. It's a really powerful tool. Uh, you can search for genre, a film, where it was shot, time periods, um, color, if it was you can search by color it's like every kind of image is tagged with these sort of things and um, yeah you can see what kind of subject was part of it was there a child in the frame what time of day they um and also you can look at format so if it was shot on digital or on film and what kind of film as well so here i brought up a bunch of different film stocks that are like some of the most cinematic and popular as you can see here you have some of the most popular films ever created, some of the most beautiful ones, as you can see, Vertigo and Blade Runner, um, and yeah, and, and The Master. So yeah, um, I picked up some examples that uh, show you what Bloom and Halation are in film. They're essentially, they are uh, defects um, that happen because of film, um, but nowadays digital cameras obviously are really sharp, really great, and, and manufacturers have really tried to like negate all kinds of issues like that. But when I work in animation, we create CG renders, like 3D renders, um, and a lot of the times we do try and bring back uh, things that are like that are art artifacts and uh, defects that are in cinema um, that we try and bring into our renders. A lot of times, especially in visual effects, you have to do that so you can match uh, the CG to what was shot on, on set. So they look seamless, so they look believable, so they look true. So I'll go in this shot of Pulp Fiction. Um, it's really great because you have all kinds of information about this, um, about this film, what it was shot on, even like the lens and all kinds of great details and a really great like color, color chart here that kind of picks out all the important colors that are on this frame. So when I click here, it's going to open it uh, in full full frame. So yeah, let's look at, I'm not sure, I hope you can see this, but there's like a little sort of red line uh, around the edges of really bright objects and against dark backgrounds. And you can see that little red line. So that is halation. So basically that means when light penetrates film, it kind of goes through different layers of color. So, uh, and they're like filters, so green, blue and red and when it seeps through red it can bounce back if something is really uh, really bright and that kind of creates that red edge to to really bright objects uh, so you can kind of see it here so that is what animation is it's part of film it's part of how film looks um, you can see it's not very strong so 
when you do it you shouldn't like go overboard it should be imperceivable almost like as you can see i have to like really zoom in to to see it uh and another thing bloom uh bloom is just like the way you can see how light spills over dark ob like really bright objects spill into the black objects so you see like her hair is much darker here than this here and that means because like the light is just really like it's again it's another um sort of imperfection in film um as light penetrates the film stock and the way the chemicals work it kind of produces this sort of glowy effects um and you can really do it as much as you want if you want it to be really strong and you want to have this kind of dreamy look or like this really beautiful morning look you can really push it or if you want it to be something more tasteful you can kind of keep it more tight um so it's not as strong i think there's another example here it's not as strong here uh as it, as it is in the other one this is from kill bell but yeah you can see how like just kind of like a bit of light just kind of seeps through in into the footage uh you can also use that when you're recording on your camera if you use a diffusion filter i use sometimes say moments 10 percent filter on my camera and that also disperses the light and creates like some glow and the, uh, around like bright objects against dark objects um but yeah you can also do it in post as well using the hanser so let's go back to da vinci um so yeah you can see all the settings that i've used a really great example for both halation and um bloom is 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 in this shot because we have these really bright lights from the theater behind um our character here uh and you can see like i really need to zoom in so i'm gonna turn off both of them um so yeah you can see i guess even in my camera has a little bit of that halation it is happening it may be more of a lens thing than coming from the camera sensor but you can kind of enhance it and mine is like so tiny oh sorry that's the vignette <laughs> um yeah so let's go back to halation actually oh there we go okay ignore me um so yeah you can see like everything is really sharp all the edges are really really sharp and um that's just not how film would look so it's really great that we have this in here and you can see it's really imperceptible it's really tiny but it's there and we know it's there and it, and it looks cool um and it kind of has that film look and then bloom you can see it kind of like blooms out where the really bright objects onto like darker objects so you can see it kind of goes under his chin it kind of lifts that up and it kind of happens all around and you can play with the threshold and how bright you want it to be how how diffuse you want it to be i think there's another shot where i don't know yeah you can see it here as well how it just kind of seeps in i'm gonna try and find another shot where things get really bright so you can kind of see that so yeah let's turn off the bloom and you can kind of see how it just kind of creates this little kind of hit like blooming effects and it looks really cool i think um and same with the elevation it's almost imperceptible if i do it like that and if we zoom in in really bright objects you will be able to see it it's like tiny um so you can push it more if you want to um and i recommend looking at films that have inspired you um and that you like and try to emulate and keep true to that um because that way it will look the best when it's when it's not as perceivable like you shouldn't be able to notice it too much you shouldn't like draw attention to itself you know what's most important is your uh the content you know like whatever you've shot um so apart from the enhancer to be able to kind of you have to like color grade each shot individually because like i shot on the streets it wasn't controlled in any way um i didn't control the lighting in any way so i just kind of tried to use lighting to my advantage so as you can see i kind of shot on on the darker side of his face and there was like sort of the sun was setting on this side it kind of gave him this like very nice little soft uh, shaping around his face but i had to push some of my colors a bit so you can see on on this note what i've done is if I've, I've pushed the tints a little bit to the green side because it is a bit magenta it's a bit stronger magenta you can see here the red line is higher than the blue and the green line so that means that the brightest um sections are a bit more red a bit more magenta so that's why i had to kind of push it a bit down 
but I've also used the offset because as you can see it's a bit too bright so even with my brightness exposure adjustment in the enhancer wasn't enough so I had to like kind of bring it down just to like it matches a level that I like and also it matches previous and other shots um what else have I done here I've kind of taken down the gain a little bit so it was just like that's like sort of your highest like mids and highs kind of had to bring it down just a slightly just slightly on this shot and um I used this color warper saturation uh, so as you can see I've kind of pushed the blues down in brightness um, and in that way it kind of creates a little bit more separation between the character's face and the background let's just kind of do it again you can see how the blues are just a bit darker and it just he really pops in the frame I think so and I think that looked better um, so that's what I've done here um, let's look at this one they're all kind of from the same same location uh, shot one after another so it kind of had to do the same you can copy and paste your nodes on, on each other so here you can see like I had to push a little bit the skin tone to be a, be a little bit warmer because you it was kind of becoming a bit too gray or blue and you're kind of losing him so I just kind of brought that back in so we get a better separation and here is sort of the same thing I've kind of lowered down the overall brightness and I've made it a little bit more uh, green and taken off all that sort of magenta pinkish and everything and obviously because I did that then I had to like bring back some of his skin tone um, and to use this tool you kind of like press on the qualifier and you can like you can see how you can like manipulate colors and drag them around but yeah again be tasteful with this and don't push it too hard um, and just yeah do it in small increments um, yeah so let's look at some other shots uh, that might be interesting like in here yeah so this is very like really strong lighting as you can see here um how all these lights everywhere on and like these leds so without the cancer and without like some of the some of these post-process effects you can see the bloom it's just like it kind of makes everything just glow a little bit uh softens out the image a little bit um the contrast gets a bit more reduced and you can see the lights are not as harsh they just have a little glow around them uh, you can see it here as well and then you can see it with halation as well uh, and here again I had to like do some adjustments here so I used some denoising because um, it was a little bit noisy uh, so that cleared up quite well I think um, and on this shot yeah uh, as you can see it was really dark so I had to bring it up um, quite a bit because um, obviously I've brought it down in here as well so like sometimes you just have to like kind of counterbalance yourself and as you can see i've like lowered down the temperature so i've made it a bit more blue rather than as it was really warm before um i kind of made it a little bit blue so i was looking at my skin tones you can see it's quite dark environment we only kind of see the subject here and the rest kind of falls down into darkness um yeah i think that's sort of it it was quite it wasn't like anything crazy um the way i color graded the footage uh, i just kind of tried to kind of balance everything make it look uh pleasant to my eye and what i and like the style I wanted to achieve wanted to look sort of filmic um i really struggled with these like the environment was quite i'm not sure it was just something with the light that look how it looked it was just very blue um and like there's almost no saturation in the skin tones so i started by uh, kind of bringing in a bit more room through the temperature uh, I kind of rate lower down the brightness a little bit and I play just a little bit with the curve to create a little bit of you know just kind of lifting the shadows because they were maybe a little bit too dark um, and then I used a bit of a v-net um, just around the edge of the screen to kind of focus on him um, and I've just increased the contrast a little bit I'm not very like precise with these you can kind of be a bit more organized if you want to but I was kind of doing it quickly and kind of testing things out and you can see here again I brought a lot of the environment down which was very blue so that's how we can sort of bring down the um, the brightness and now a subject really pops and you can see his skin I've made his skin uh, through this uh, color warper tool a little bit more saturated so it just kind of he just kind of pops out of the frame a really useful thing is to press the light box uh, over here 
Um, so that way you can see all your shots in context with each other. And that way you can make sure that, you know, your consistency and your look um, and that nothing like kind of jumps out at you as looking way too different. You can see like you can maybe make sure your reds are sort of consistent across the frame. And yeah, you can kind of see how everything progresses. And yeah, that's really, really useful over here. And you can do some light controls on, on the show. You kind of click on it and you can kind of start adjusting it if you want to. And you can see it update live. So that's really useful. Another great um, uh, thing to use is a gallery. So I brought in some films from Shot Deck. Um, and they, you can create a still. So let's go back to my uh where are they yeah so you can have a ref and you can kind of drag it into your timeline um and you can right click on anything and grab a still and it's going to create one a still here and you can use these to if you have a certain inspiration or something that you wanted to kind of make your footage look like you can kind of bring it in in here or compare um just kind of compare colors and you can compare it in here um you can kind of see it as, as you shift around it. You can kind of see how your footage compares to another piece of footage. You know, how your blues are if you wanted to achieve a certain like look. Um, it's really useful to kind of have this. And also you can compare different versions. Um, you can compare different versions of your of your footage. Uh, so basically, when you create a still, it also copies like these adjustments. Um, so you can make a few more and then compare. And if you... If you want to go back and you kind of lost um, your previous setup, you can apply grade and that's just going to apply the grade here from that still. Um, so that's really, really useful. So you can kind of see how they play out and you can click on it here and you can kind of see it and compare it and, you know, make sure maybe your skin tones are looking the same, you know, your highlights and so on. Um, so, yeah, um, I think this is it. Uh, if you have any like questions, please message me. And also don't forget that you get 10% off the answer using uh, the codes that I'm going to put somewhere here. It's called Bobby G. Uh, so thanks so much for watching. Um, this is my first video, so I'm a bit nervous and I ramble a lot. But I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon.